In last week's Stranded in the Cold test, I noticed a big difference between the state of charge I was seeing on the app and what I was seeing on the screen. And so my data in the middle of the night took this big drop off when I started reading the screen. And because I noticed this, I started charting that toward the end of the test. And that difference seemed to represent the difference we were seeing as the battery got colder and I was starting to see the blue snowflake, showing that part of the battery was currently unavailable because it was too cold. So on the screen, we were seeing the actual amount available, but in the app, we were seeing that theoretical amount of this is how much should be there. But how do you get that back? And can you even? Well, that's what we're looking at today. And if you're plugged in, it's easy. All you do is precondition your car from the app, set that to go before you're, you leave, and it uses the wall power to heat up the battery pack, and you're off and running with little or no range loss whatsoever. And then once you're on the road, you're more efficient because you've got that warm pack. When you're not plugged in, well, that's what today's tests are about. We're going to do two drives. The first is having charged the car in the morning, I set it out in the driveway and let it just cool there for four hours. Then we got in the car, dead cold, and started driving. Then after getting home, we're going to let the car sit again for four hours, really cool down, and see that difference between the app and the screen again. And this time we're going to precondition for about 20 minutes is what I usually would do in a preconditioning situation. And again, this is going to be unplugged, so it'll give us a good sense of does either one of these methods actually give us back that battery capacity, or is it just lost in different ways? For safety's sake, it didn't make sense for me to drive and take the data, so Ellie was kind enough to join me and do that data tracking for me. So can you explain what you are tracking and how often? Yeah, every five minutes I took a reading on the battery level from the app and from the car and the watt hours per mile and whether the snowflake icon was still visible and I added the temperature reading from the weather app on your phone. And so we've already done drive one, we've got that data in and we're letting the car cool down. We're gonna do another drive and see how that goes. We'll meet up with you after that drive. Okay, the app was saying 57%. Uh, the car is saying 52, and you can see here is that blue difference on the battery icon. So I'm going to keep this preconditioning. I'm going to do it for 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and do that drive. We'll see how much we lost from now to when we start driving, and then how much we lose during the drive. As much as I'm sure you all want to sit through both of our almost hour-long tests, I'm going to spare you from that, but I did want to point out a couple things before we get into the data. Both drives were identical. We took the same route. It took about exactly the same amount of time, which means our stops and starts were probably pretty equivalent, as was our speed. Both trips took roughly 54 minutes, and I intentionally tried to get out of town relatively quickly and onto some 55 mile an hour roads so that we weren't necessarily going on the interstate speeds, but we also weren't just going through town with the hope that this would give kind of an average experience. But in case you feel like you're missing that good family road trip experience, I'll play you one of the highlights. Here you go. Now let's look at that data. On our first drive, we had the snowflake showing on both the car and the app, and started out with 82% on the app and 78 on the car. As time passes, you can see they both start going down and converge near the 30 minute mark. The snowflake icon was showing until we hit about 28 or 29 minutes, and it wasn't until after about 31 minutes that we actually saw any regen. Then it was pretty light, and then by the end of our drive, I had almost full regen again. And you can see after we lose the snowflake that those lines are pretty close to each other. We ended that drive with the numbers just being one apart, 57 in the app and 56% in the car. Our second drive started with both 50% showing in the car and on the app. They continued almost identically throughout the whole test and we never saw the snowflake icon. That second drive ended showing 25% on the app and 24% in the car. So if we take a look at the range we lost from what the app was showing from beginning to end on both tests, you can see each one lost 25%. Pretty identical, right? That is until we bring in the 20 minutes of preheating. When I began preheating for that second drive, 
I had 57% showing on the app and 52 in the car. So once it warmed up and we were showing 50 on both of them and started driving, we had lost 2% in the car, but 7% in the app. Adding that 7% on top of the 25% we lost driving, we actually lost 32% from the time I started preconditioning to when we finished driving. And this is completely contrary to what I assumed. But luckily we also have the data from our average one hour per mile as we were going through these times. So let's take a look at that. On our first drive we shot right up to 657 watt hours per mile as the pack went from dead cold to try to warm itself up and trying to propel us. Even though some of that early part of the drive was downhill, we weren't getting any regen, so it was having to do all the work. That came down into the 500s and then settled around the mid to low 400 range. Still high for a normal drive, but it was 16 degrees out. Our second drive performed just about how I expected for the most part. It jumped up, but only jumped up to that 450 watt hour per mile level and then danced around the middle 400s through the rest of the test. The temperature was 5 to 10 degrees colder than our afternoon test, but still I expected this watt hour per mile to be much lower since we had preconditioned. Since the terrain and speed on both tests was the same, I'm assuming that the difference at the end of the test where the second drive goes a little higher, using more energy, is because of those colder temps. So what does this all mean? First, it seems like that section of blue battery in the graphic, or the difference between what your car is saying and the app, is the amount of battery it's going to take to warm that pack back up. So if you're plugged in and preconditioned, you get that back. If you're unplugged, you're going to lose it if you precondition. Second, according to this test, it seems like if you're in a low state of charge situation and need every mile you can get your hands on, you're better off skipping preconditioning and just hit the road, and you should get some of that percentage back as the pack warms up while you're driving. But that brings us to point three. If you're in such a low state of charge that you might not be able to warm the pack up enough to use that, you could get stuck in a bad situation. So if you're under 10%, you might want to consider looking for even a 120 volt outlet rather than, you know, scrambling 20 miles to a supercharger. That would hopefully get you enough to at least warm that pack up and get that good range back. But you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you're doing long-term damage to your battery. So this is all my rambling, but what does Tesla actually tell us to do? Well, the snowflake is in a couple places in the owner's manual. And under car status, it says, A blue snowflake appears when some of the energy stored in the battery may not be available due to cold weather conditions. During these cold weather conditions, charging rates may also be limited. If Model Y is plugged in, you can heat your battery by turning on climate control with the mobile app. The snowflake disappears when the battery is sufficiently warm. So this is specifically mentioning plugged in. And if we look under cold weather best practices, it says this. A blue snowflake icon appears on your touchscreen when some of the stored energy in the battery is unavailable because the battery is cold. This portion of unavailable energy displays in blue on the battery meter. Regenerative braking, acceleration, and charge rates may be limited. The snowflake icon no longer displays when the battery is sufficiently warm. There are a lot of other great tips in that section, but as it pertains to us, it seems pretty clear that they want you preconditioning for good long-term battery health. I'd have to agree, and even if you're unplugged, it's probably best to precondition your EV. Now, if you're in that situation where you need every mile you can, or if you just like to live dangerously, it does seem like skipping the preconditioning process once in a while is a way to get back some of that snowflaked range. Let me know your thoughts if you like to live dangerously or if I missed something down below in the comments. If you found this as interesting as I did, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff if you want to. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.